From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. We are tracking the campaign trail in Montana and across the country this morning with Election Day coming up tomorrow. Of course, a much anticipated campaign season wrapping up. Plus, we are keeping an eye out for elderly folks who are making political donations. There's a couple things you need to know to keep the seniors in your life safe. And the latest on the Billings City water bill debacle as residents continue to report um, unusually high water bills with no answers yet from the city of Billings. We look closer at that in just a few minutes. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Monday, November 4th. I'm Augusta McDonald here with Miller Robson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Augusta. Good morning. Welcome to the first week of November. Uh it's really uh, it's starting to really feel like those cooler temperatures are starting to nip a little. Outside. Yeah, very seasonal today and then we've got some colder temperatures. You know, Wednesday there's a chance Billings may not get out of the 30s, so kind of a swing there and then we're going to warm right back up again. We may see some 60s by the time we get to the weekend. So crazy weather continuing here in Montana and Wyoming as we uh, take a look back in time yesterday. Very seasonal, our high of 51 here in Billings. Boom, exactly where we should be. A little warmer than average with our low only getting down to 34, but still quite chilly out there. Uh, yesterday we had a top gust near 30 miles an hour at the airport. Still going to be very breezy across the area today, but as we get into the afternoon through tomorrow morning around Livingston, uh, the Beartooth Foothills, usual suspects, those winds will really start to pick up with gusts up to 60 miles an hour expected. We'll talk about that coming up. So it's a dry start to the month. Of course, we're in the hole for the year. We do have some moisture attached to this big cold front coming through. Oh man, wind are going to try to give us a gut punch, especially off to our west. We'll talk about that coming up too. Right now we're sitting at 30 at the airport. Feels like 25. Humidity at 60. 66% dew point temperatures at 20 winds out of the south at about five miles an hour across the area this morning. We wake up to temperatures in the 20s and 30s and look at that. Winter storm warnings, blizzard warning, winter storm watch, advisory, wind warnings and advisories in effect. But which, which of those will actually affect our area? You see a lot of that stuff going on, but it's going to be mainly to our west. But we will get a little bit of that for us. We'll tell you where with the main forecast coming up. All right, Miller, thanks for tracking all those details. And let's head to the campaign trail. Of course, that big election is tomorrow. And in a late shock in the race for president, new polling has Vice President Kamala Harris ahead of former President Donald Trump in the state of Iowa. The Des Moines Register Mediacom Iowa poll has Harris leapfrogging Trump only months after he had a double digit lead in the state. Naomi Rockham breaks down the new numbers as early voting wraps up across the country. A new poll has Vice President Kamala Harris ahead of former President Donald Trump in Iowa, a typically red state which Trump has won twice. The Des Moines Register Mediacom Iowa poll has Harris ahead 47 to 44 percent. The late polling comes in the final days of early voting coast to coast. In the hotly contested swing state of Michigan, more than 2 million people have already voted early, with more than 800,000 voting in person. Women are a crucial voting bloc for both candidates, and the stark division is glaring over reproductive rights in America. It's about health care, right? It's about people butting their noses into things that don't have anything to do with them. I thought that Trump was going to win it the second time and that did not happen. And this time, of course, that's where I'm going to be voting because that's where my values and my morals are going to be represented the best. But in other states, early voting is lagging. In Chicago, a strong turnout and long lines in the final weekend still had the city 300,000 ballots behind this point four years ago. In California, where all signs point to a clear Democratic victory in the presidential column, voters are procrastinating, largely due to state and local races and a long list of ballot measures to consider, which could all make for a very hectic day at the polls on Tuesday. Naomi Ruckham, CBS News. The Iowa poll shows older women and those who are politically independent driving the late shift toward Harris. Trump won Iowa in the last two presidential campaigns by more than eight points. And again, just a day away from Election Day, and that means it is the home stretch for political canvassers. In this heightened political climate, we're told that practice can be more dangerous than ever. But one local canvasser says they were pleasantly surprised by their interactions in Billings. Elizabeth Klarich has been canvassing for candidates of various political parties since 1980. That's when her husband was running for a school board position. With a maximum of 50 doors a day, she says she's seen a few signs this year that keep her at bay, but has also had some very good conversations. 
through democracy, there's acceptance that there's a variety of beliefs and a variety of ways of looking at issues. She says a bad attitude shouldn't keep folks from sharing opposing points of view. It's a difference of opinion that makes democracy great. This election season has already been one of the most expensive in Montana to date. And for those who give to campaigns, a new study shows dozens of elderly donors with dementia are giving their life savings away and don't even know it. Our Isabel Sparts has more. G55, five, five. Even at the weekly bingo game. In the mail today, for instance, I think I got four. Politics is on the mind of many. It's something hard to escape. I, like many people that I know, I am very tired of it. Be good to have it over. Despite the flooding of political messaging, Dick and Carolyn Dye still donate frequently. It's something that we desire to do. Yes, to support our candidate. Yeah. They say they usually send a check. But a recent CNN investigation found that dozens of senior citizens, specifically those with cognitive decline, had donated over $6 million to political campaigns. And without even realizing it, the culprit, they didn't realize they had to uncheck a box in order to not give each month. Too much of it going on. And I can't understand why something can't be done. For Montana's races, over $8 million has been donated from those who are retired, the largest contributing group of donors. Folks like to give, um, and especially our older adults in our community know that giving back is important, and so they're really tempted to give to whatever kind of comes along that touches their heart. Tyler Amundsen with Big Sky Senior Services says that those with memory issues can fall victim, believing candidates are personally reaching out. Folks who didn't grow up with text messages don't know that there's a massive platform generating those, so they might actually believe that there's somebody helping or wanting their attention. There's no current campaign's finance laws preventing organizations fundraising for both parties from leaving monthly boxes checked. Yeah, when you live on a fixed income, you kind of watch your pennies a little more. Something these bingo players have to think about. Go directly to the source. So if you're serious about giving to a political campaign or to a, any donation of any kind, um, to go online and find their website and do it through there and not do it through texting or um, that, that kind of avenue. In Billings, Isabel Sparts, MTN News. Isabel, thanks so much. Saturday was election day on the Crow Reservation that had thousands of voters convening in Crow Agency. They have to turn in their ballots in person with a tribal ID required and uh, others can't drop off ballots. There aren't any polling locations, uh, satellite polling locations. So everybody has to travel to Crow Agency for this election. Um, there's 89 people who voted absentee by a September deadline. But other than that, uh, transportation becomes a big issue with this election. With poverty in just about every direction, you turn on the reservation. Eco economic development seems to be the most pressing issue, we're told. And the question for voters, which candidate can make the big difference? Food and transportation take center stage election day. This is a two million acre reservation. Even candidates themselves driving as far away as prior to help pick a people up. There's no jobs. So with no jobs and you don't have no money, you can't buy any vehicles, right? So there's no transportation. The people I'm going after, there's 25 people in prior Montana right now that we're going after. Officials estimate about 3,500 people voted this year. Official results are posted on Tribal Secretary Levi Black Eagle's Facebook page. And the countdown to Election Day is on with candidates finishing up their final pitches in one of the most watched races, Montana Senate race between Republican challenger Tim Sheehy and incumbent Democrat John Tester. The battle has stayed pretty close throughout with one of the most discussed issues being Sheehy's gunshot wound and how exactly he received it. And now that story is in the headlines again. The businessman originally said he was shot during friendly fire overseas during his military career. However, Glacier Park Ranger Kim Peach said in 2015 he was instead cited for discharging a firearm in the park, and that was the reason for the wound. Sheehy even had a handwritten statement admitting an improperly stored gun fell and discharged into his arm. 
However, in an interview with national conservative talk show host Megyn Kelly, he claims again it happened during friendly fire, likely because of foreign forces that the U.S. military was helping in Afghanistan. She did not provide any details about when or where it happened. This left Kelly commenting, quote, so confusing. When asked to clarify, she did not provide any specific information, only saying there's no record for fear of being sent back to the U.S. at the time. And some unwelcome news for folks looking to buy a home. Mortgage rates ticked up for the fifth straight week. That, as well as this being a presidential election year, has many buyers waiting to make that big purchase. Thomas Hoppo looks into how those results could play a part in the market. Every election year, there is talks about how it will affect the housing market. So we decided to take a look at the historical impact. An analysis from Bankrate shows home prices have climbed an average 4.8% in election years dating back to 1987. In non-election years, the numbers are pretty similar. Home prices climbed an average of 4.4%. The worst year for the housing market was 2008. But Bankrate found that had little to do with the election and more to do with the historic housing bubble burst and the global economy collapsing. 2004 was one of the best years for the housing market, but that's when the housing bubble was inflating. It didn't have much to do with George W. Bush's re-election. Bankrate reports that this seems more like coincidence than a blueprint for housing trends. But there's no denying the election has an impact on the mindset of home buyers. People really get that that kind of deer in the headlights uh, mode about them where they just want to wait and see. A recent survey from Redfin finds 23 percent of buyers looking to purchase their first home are waiting until after the election. On the Harris uh, campaign website, you can go to Chapter 7, and there are, there are extremely detailed plans on the $25,000 down payment assistance, putting um, policy into place to, to make it easier for developers to build. And um, Donald Trump talks a lot about um, immigration, but uh, doesn't seem to have many policies laid out on his, uh, on his website. But one place where they, where they both do kind of agree is easing up on zoning laws and, and using federal land to, uh, to build housing. While the uncertainty of housing policies may have some people waiting to buy a home, the majority cite other factors. 30% of people say they want to save more money first. Another 28% say they're waiting because that's just the timing that works better for their family. Others are waiting for the Federal Reserve to cut interest rates. Thomas Hoppo, Scripps News.